I'm Howard Reisman, the CEO of Stock Rover, and in this video we're going to cover Stock Rover's ratio charts. So what is a ratio chart? A ratio chart is a very lucid way to see how two different sets of time series data are trending against each other. So let's create a ratio chart to see exactly what this means. First, let's just chart Google and Facebook for the last five years to see their performance. So we select chart, we type in Google, we add Facebook as a comparison ticker, and we change the time period to five years. We can see that they sort of run together, but with Facebook clearly outperforming Google over the five year period. Now let's generate a ratio chart. To do this, we first select technicals, and from the pull down, we select ratio charts. We get this ratio chart dialog to fill in. We select Google as one ticker, Facebook as the other. The metric is already selected as price, and we click OK to see the ratio chart. In this chart, it's easy to see that Facebook outperformed Google for about three and a half years until July of 2017. There, the momentum shifted to Google. The switch is not nearly as apparent in the pricing chart above. After 18 months of Google outperformance, it looks like another switch back to Facebook starting in January 1st of 2019. So like a tennis match, the momentum shifts back and forth between the companies for extended stretches of time. So that's a basic ratio chart. You can do much more with ratio charts. To change anything in a ratio chart, you can go back to the technicals menu and reselect ratio charts. Or you can click on the hamburger icon next to the chart. So let's add a simple moving average to the ratio chart. We do this by clicking on the hamburger icon, selecting change ratio, clicking on add technicals, and then just checking the simple moving average box and clicking OK. Now the chart redraws with the simple moving average lines of 50 and 150 days. We can also customize the simple moving average. Let's add a third line to the simple moving average, which is the 250-day trailing average price. Here you can see the chart redrawn with three simple moving average lines now, the 50, the 150, and the 250. Similarly, you can use the exponential moving average you can also create Bollinger Bands. Both can also be customized. For example, this is how we customize Bollinger Bands. First, we'll select the ratio chart again, remove the simple moving average technical, add the Bollinger Bands. We see by default the period, the moving average period is 20 days and the price deviation bands are two standard deviations. We're going to change the period to 50 day. Now you can see the chart redrawn with the 50-day moving average uh, with two standard deviations width. Let's consider a practical example of where ratio charts can be helpful to investors. Let's assume I would like to add an auto manufacturer in my portfolio and I'm debating between General Motors or Ford. Let's do a ratio chart on these two. And let's remove the Bollinger Bands. Here we can see that clearly GM is outperforming Ford price-wise and has been for a long time. Assuming the trend continues, you would clearly want to select GM. The only caveat is, of course, trends end when they end, and unfortunately there is no reliable prediction for that. We can also do a ratio chart on fundamentals. Let's do two examples. First, we have seen GM doing a lot better than Ford, but with this disparity over time, what about valuation? Has GM gotten too expensive relative to Ford? With ratio charts, we can answer that question. Let's look at GM versus Ford in the price to earnings dimension. So to do that, we go back to the ratio dialog. Here we type in price and see price change it to price to earnings. And we change it to price to earnings here and rechart. Here we can see if anything, GM has become cheaper relative to Ford over time. So valuation is not a cause for concern. We can also do a ratio chart of a company against itself. 
Since we are interested in GM, let's look at its debt per share versus its price over time, since debt is always a worry for auto manufacturers, especially in a rising interest rate environment. So we'll go back to the ratio chart, select change ratio, and put GM, but select debt per share as the numerator, put GM in the denominator, and leave it at price. Here we see that debt per share relative to price for General Motors has generally been increasing, which may be a cause for concern. Certainly this is an area that would merit further research. So you can see with a few quick clicks, you can generate ratio charts that can be highly illuminating and helping you make more informed investment decisions. That completes the tour of ratio charts and stock over. Be sure to check out our other stock over videos on charting. Thank you for watching.